All right, hello everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Red Meat 101. We have coaches Kathy and Jake here to do the presentation, but before we get started, just a couple of items to take care of. We will hopefully have time for some questions at the end of the presentation. You can type those into the question box in the lower portion of your control panel. And we will be posting a recording of the webinar online, but if you would like a copy of the presentation in PDF format, or if your question does not get answered today, please email our support inbox, which will be shown at the end of the presentation today. All right, let's get started. Here is Cassie and Jake. So today we're going to be talking about why specifically red meat, what is it, why does red meat have such a bad reputation, we're going to discuss processed versus unprocessed red meat, the balance of it in a healthy diet, and specifically the benefits of red meat. All right. First, as health coaches, we wanted to, to approach this topic with impartial views. Why is this a debated topic? Why are we talking about this? And what do we hear as health coaches? For example, when I ask a participant, tell me more about your diet, what you try to eat more of, and what do you try to remove? This would be an example of a response I'd get from someone telling me that they have a good lifestyle. Oh, well, I eat a lot of fruits and veggies. I don't eat red meat, and I avoid fast foods. I hear something similar to this every single day. Someone has the opportunity to tell me all the amazing things they do when it comes to health and wellness, and red meat gets brought up a majority of the time. They assume that they're being healthy because red meat is not a part of their diet. So why is this? Maybe the news? Who hasn't seen an article about red meat as a headline? Some of the bi biggest publications in the world have reported on red meat, most of them being negative. This is why we wanted to have a webinar about this topic. Red meat, what is it? Well, a very geeky definition of red meat is defined as all meats obtained from mammals because they contain more myoglobin than white meat, chicken, or fish. What you actually need to know is you get red meat from muscle meat from a mammal. So that includes beef, veal, pork, lamb, horse, and goat. What's with the bad reputation? Over the past four decades, red meat has been increasingly blamed for everything from heart disease to cancer. Newspapers and magazines love to plaster warning headlines about red meat across their front pages, but these claims are ill-founded and misleading. In fact, an impartial review of the evidence indicates that red meat is one of the healthiest foods you can eat. What's with the bad reputation? One of the reasons comes to the conclusion that red meat is high in saturated fat and cholesterol. And you know what? That's true. That is not up to debate. However, we need to change how we look at saturated fat and cholesterol and identify that with several new studies involving a lot of people, we know that consuming saturated fat and cholesterol has no negative effects on our health especially our cardiovascular system. Not only do new studies show this, but it actually shows the opposite. Consuming red meats and other foods high in saturated fat and cholesterol can actually be, be, actually be beneficial for our health. All right, so what happened? Back in the 20th century, there was a major epidemic with people developing heart disease. Researchers learned that eating saturated fat seemed to increase levels of cholesterol in the bloodstream. This led to the following assumption being made. I want to make this very clear before I say this. This is what they observed, but to this date there are no studies to prove that saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease. If saturated fat raises, okay, so this is what these assumptions were made. If saturated fat raises cholesterol, and cholesterol is higher in those who have heart disease, then that must mean saturated fat causes heart disease. However, this correlation is not connected, and again, no studies have ever proved that cholesterol causes heart disease. 
Cholesterol and saturated fat in your diet can increase your total cholesterol. That is also something that's been proven. However, the main reason is due to the fact that it increases your HDLs. HDLs are associated with good cholesterol, something we need. It is something that is very important to very important with your health. I also want to talk about the importance of cholesterol. Cholesterol in your body has been viewed as this demon. But did you know that cholesterol in your body serves as a vital role to keep us alive? We would not be here if it wasn't for cholesterol. Cholesterol serves the role in your body and it helps to repair and fix cells. I want to repeat that. Cholesterol helps produce new cells and fix damaged cells. So this is a little strange, but I want to use kind of an analogy to help you understand this. This has nothing to do with the body, obviously. Let's say there's a house, there's a house on fire. There's a fire. Firefighters are always going to be there to help put out the fire. So would you assume or correlate that firefighters cause fires? No. They are there to fix a problem. Cholesterol has a very similar role. If we have damaged tissue, let's say to our cardiovascular system, or if your body's trying to fix something, it produces more cholesterol. This is why cholesterol is better as an indicator saying something needs to be changed. So what lifestyle changes need to be made? Just another observation, this is also why cholesterol goes up in females when they're pregnant. They are building something. All right. I mentioned earlier about the articles and the headlines saying cholesterol and saturated fat are bad for you. Where did they get this information? It did come from studies. However, let's talk about two different types of studies. Randomized controlled trials are the gold standard of science. In these studies, people are randomized into group groups. For example, group one eats diet one, group two only eats diet two. Researchers will then follow these individuals or these groups to see outcomes. You can't really do this with diets, and it's very hard to do with just one ingredient like red meat. There are too many variables, and it would take a very, very long time. All right. Like I mentioned a second ago, there are some studies that state that they can show the negative effect of red meat with a link to heart disease and other preventable diseases. These studies have headlines that say they quote unquote prove that red meat causes harm. These types of studies are called observational studies and they can only demonstrate correlation that two variables are associated, okay? Observational studies can work, but in the case of red meat in your diet, it's not appropriate and it's not concrete. In these studies, they think they have been able to show that a group of individuals who eat more red meat are more likely to get sick, but they fail to mention that these same people engage in other unhealthy behaviors. But we have to look at the lifestyle of those individuals. You can't look at one thing. You need to look at the big picture and what types of lifestyles these individuals have. Cassie will go more into this in a few slides. Okay, so what happened next? The war on fat. In, in the 70s, dietary guidelines were released that recommended that we reduce our consumption of saturated fat and cholesterol. What happened to our diets when that happened? High fat foods, foods high in protein and fats were demonized. Welcome high carbohydrate diet. When you remove one macronutrient, you're allowing others to be much higher. Since a lot of good protein sources, or red meat for example, can also have a higher fat content, we saw a decline in proteins and fats. This shouldn't be a surprise that the American diet consists of a, of a lot of highly processed carbohydrates. This graph shows what happened to us when these recommendations were released in the 70s. We got overweight and we got unhealthier. 
A very similar line to this graph shows that we had a rise in preventable diseases such as cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. All right, so let's look at this. So what happened to our bodies when we, or what happened to our body when we eat more carbohydrate and reduce fat intake? Let's look at our biometrics. We're a wellness company. You all have done our screenings. Let's look at your biometrics. First, it's very hard to feel full when you consume a lot of carbohydrates. This is an extreme example, but I want to use it anyways. Think about eating ice cream or a bag of chips versus eating two sticks of butter. You couldn't eat that much fat in one sitting. You will feel very full, but we could easily eat a bag of chips or a few bowls of ice cream and not feel that full. When we do that, we have to mentally tell ourselves, okay, that's enough, let's put it away. Fat helps us feel full. When we eat fat with protein, our appetite is suppressed and we feel satiated longer. Satiated means the feel, feeling full. Carbohydrates don't make us feel full very long. We might initially feel satiated or satisfied, but then we get hungry quicker and we need to eat again. When we feel full, we eat less. This is one example of how carbohydrates can make us gain weight. Triglycerides. Triglycerides or trigs are a big one. Trigs are a part of your cholesterol. Trigs are a type of fat in your blood. However, it comes from the consumption of carbohydrates. When you eat refined carbohydrates and sugars, sugar is the definition of a refined carbohydrate, you are causing your blood sugar to rise, or glucose, blood glucose. When you have a rise of blood glucose, your body reacts by releasing insulin. That should be pretty, um, that's a, that should be pretty familiar to us, but insulin helps bring our glucose down. When insulin is broken down in the liver, it produces a triglyceride. That's where triglycerides come from. It comes from the consumption of carbohydrates. This is very obvious on your, on your biometrics, on your, on, your, on your lab slips, or on your, uh, your report. If you consume a lot of carbohydrates, it usually can, or if you have high triglycerides, it's usually associated with carbohydrate consumption. Also, know that insulin suppresses hungry, meaning it makes us feel hungry. Does make us, we don't get the feeling of full. And it makes our body store fat. The last biometric that I want to discuss, your blood glucose. If your diet that is consistently high in sugar and refined carbohydrates, your body has to work really, really hard to keep your, your glucose down. This causes a lot of wear and tear on the body and eventually making our body resistant to insulin. Welcome type 2 diabetes. My point of telling you this is that it's a big circle. There are many examples we can give, but I just picked a, few, a couple big ones. It's a big circle. It all comes back to the fact that high carbohydrates and high sugar diets are very damaging to the body. You will benefit from eating a diet high in protein and fat, focusing more of your energy. So my recommendation, focus more of your energy on removing refined carbohydrates and sugars. So when talking about what specifically is red meat in the processed and unprocessed versions, processed red meat is meat that's been modified from its natural state. So when it's salted, cured, fermented, smoking, or other processes to enhance preservation. Unprocessed meat is as simple as an unaltered from its natural state. Moving on to the healthy user causation. This goes along with the, the bad stigma that red meat gets every day. Red meat has been vilified by the media for years. People who eat less red meat because they think it's bad are more likely to eat less of other foods that are actually unhealthy. They are also far more likely to participate in healthy lifestyle choices like being physically active and avoiding things like nicotine use. This is where correlation and not causation comes into full effect. As Jake mentioned, when you think of red meat, you think of hamburgers with a bun, hot dogs, french fries, ketchup, and maybe a sundae to go with it. It's safe to assume that a highly processed red meat diet is correlated with a high carbohydrate intake, refined sugars, trans fats, and processed foods. 
A diet high in refined carbs has shown to cause health problems such as elevated glucose and cholesterol numbers. When choosing red meat, your source and the things you're eating associated with it really do make a difference. People who make healthy choices to include fruits and vegetables in their diet tend to eat less red meat. This is the user causation that puts a stigma on red meat. Not all red meat consumption needs to be topped with a bun or washed down with a soda. When red meat is consumed from a whole healthy, unprocessed foods, it's a great whole protein source with many benefits and nutrients to support a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so let's talk about some of the benefits of red meat. Among many things, protein is used to build and repair tissues in the body. Because we cannot store protein, it's important to get enough from a whole source in your diet each day. When red meat is consumed in a healthy diet as a source of protein, it can provide many essential nutrients. Many of the nutrients found in red meat can be difficult or less bioavailable in alternative food sources. Bioavailable meaning how your body can break it down and use it the best. A high quality protein source such as red meat is vital for muscle mass and strength at any age. Amino acids are what essentially make a protein. Your body needs 22 specific amino acids to build the proteins you find in your body like muscles, red blood cells, and immune cells. Your body can only produce 13 of these amino acids on its own, meaning you need to get the other nine from your diet. Animal protein is the best protein source that contains all nine essential amino acids. Without consuming all these amino acids, you consume an incomplete protein, which is much less bioavailable bio and harder to break down for your body to use. Examples of just some of the benefits of red meat are creatine. It's only found in animal foods. It helps form an energy reserve in your brain and muscles. It's very beneficial for growth and maintenance of the muscles. Carnosine is an amino acid found primarily in red meat. It works as an antioxidant to provide protection against degenerative processes. B12. B12 cannot be obtained from most consumed plants. B12 helps keep the body's nerve and blood cells healthy. It can also help prevent anemia. DHA and EPA. These are active forms of omega-3s that are primarily in animal foods. The body is inefficient in converting ALAs, which are the plant form of omega-3s, into active forms. B6 is very important for blood formation. Iron, is when found in red meat, is absorbed very efficiently. Zinc is very important for the growth and maintenance of the body and is very highly bioavailable in red meat. Insulinium, it acts as an antioxidant as well as has anti-inflammatory effects regarding thyroid function. People with a lower intake of selenium have been associated with increased risk of mortality, poor immune function, and cognitive decline. All right. Just going off what Cassie just said, she mentioned a lot of the benefits of red meat. So what's the con? I've really thought about this. The only real con of red meat is that we were told not to eat it. Okay, so let's, let's wrap up this discussion. As health coaches, what do we want to hear? What do we want you to get out of this? We want, we want to hear that you're eating real food. We want you to limit the amount of processed foods in your diet, especially processed, refined carbohydrates. We want to hear that you're no longer afraid of saturated fat and cholesterol. We want you to recognize what low-fat diet recommendations did to our diets. When you look around at the grocery store, what do you see? What is advertised? What has a flashy new box? What has a very long shelf life? And probably the most important, what is usually the cheapest? Most of the time, it's processed, refined carbohydrates. Not always, obviously, but a large majority of it. We want you to have a well-balanced diet. Red meat, or eating red meat, is an excellent way for you to do this. It's very nutritious. It's an excellent protein source. 
and it can help support a healthy lifestyle. Here are just some sources that we use throughout the, the presentation if you want to dig deeper in some of the stuff we talked about today. All right, as always, just to share um, where you can find more information about this webinar and about everything that we've got going on. We have a Facebook page, we have Twitter, Instagram. For those specific questions, that if they don't get answered today, we've got our health coach at healthcheck360.com. And then you will be able to watch this webinar on our blog. Starting tomorrow, we should have it up, um, and then any past webinars are on there as well. And then speaking of webinars, upcoming webinars. Next month is Improve by Five, Tips to Improve Your Health Check 360 Score. And then in June is What's in a Name. We'll talk about food labels and things like organic, free range, and what they really mean for you and your health. All right, and we will get to the questions here. All righty. So first question that looks like we got here was, does quality of red meat make a difference? So this answer is different for everyone, um, but yes, it can make a difference. This question can be answered as a continuum to where you may currently be at your diet with red meat consumption. So ask yourself, um, are you eating on the go? Are you eating at a restaurant, maybe through a drive through a lot? For you, the next step may be to go to the grocery store or the butcher and buy your red meat source from there and prepare it at home by yourself. That would may be your first step in the right direction. For someone else already doing that, buying it from a grocery store, the next step may be you know, looking for a grass-fed option or buying from your local farmer's market. All right. Next question it looks like we got here was, how much red meat should I eat? Once again, this kind of depends on your lifestyle. Um, it depends on your current health goals, how active you may be, your age, and how you're currently feeling. So your best bet is honestly to inquire with a health coach, and we can take some of those specific things into account before giving you an answer. All right. Protein from a supplement. Uh, supplements, uh, when it comes to protein, I want you to view it in two ways. Well, first of all, what's your goal? Okay. If you are rushed, if you're uh, trying to get out of the house real quick and you have a, a good protein source, um, I, I would still recommend trying to get it from an animal source. This would be your, your whey protein concentrate variety. Just understand the benefits of consuming protein would be better to eat it or consume it. A supplement is still a supplement. It supplements a healthy lifestyle. So know what your goals are, uh, how active you are, and that, that goes into a whole a bunch of other categories. All right, I do want to answer a couple of these questions, more questions. All right, yeah, just give me a second, guys. So Kathy just kind of mentioned real quickly uh, grass-fed meat uh, and the role and the benefits of the benefits of, of health benefits of red meat. Yes, uh, grass-fed beef is a higher quality in the sense of of what it what it's eating. It's it's eating what a cow is, is kind of supposed to eat. To answer your question simply, um, Kathy also mentioned the benefits of omega threes. We've all heard of the benefits of omega threes. Uh, in the, the animal source of omega-3s of EPA and DHA, those are more concentrated in grass-fed options. So in that sense, yeah, it is more nutrient-dense. I saw the one comment, I agree, that did look delicious. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So quality of red meat, sirloin versus chuck, this goes more to the fact of, of fat content. And that, that should be my big point of this. We're not giving a limit on that. If you, if you want a, a, a fattier piece of meat, know, know what, what that's going to benefit. You're going to feel full. Um, it might not have quite as much protein, but in the sense of actual fat content, we need to not be too worried about that. Let's see here. 
portion size of red meat on your plate, that goes along with what Cassie just answered. Depends on what your goals are, right? How much protein do you want to consume? Rare event, how you cook a meat, how you cook all your meats. Is it rare, is it well done? Um, probably something we don't want to go too much into because the fact that you're eating it instead of staying away from it is going to be beneficial. Um, quality of the meat can change if you overcook it. Uh, the big thing, health concern, is make sure you cook the outside of the steak. Uh, but in the sense of rare, it's, it's, what, it's for your liking. There, there can be, it can be healthier. How much healthier? We might be, might be splitting hairs a little bit, but something just to think about there, too. All right, we're going to answer one more question, and then if you guys have additional questions, we can definitely feel free to send us an email, and I'll get in contact with you guys. I like answering these questions. That means you guys are engaged, and that's what I love to do. Um, the bacon's a big one, right? Should you consume it moderately, okay? I, I'm going to kind of circle back and say, what are you currently eating, and what are your goals, okay? The term moderately isn't really the best with this. What I've recognized with, with bacon is that you actually don't eat very much of it. Think about how many slices you might consume, okay? You might consume, you know, let's say at max three to four. If you look at the size of that versus, you know, other, you know, energy intake, I, I would say it's absolutely fine. Um, again, the reason why we've been told to stay away from it is due to saturated fat and cholesterol. And that's, that's a big point that I wanted to get across from here. So use that for all of that. Um, again, just, just eat real food. Stay away from the processed stuff. The, the bodybuilder question. Um, this is something I don't really want to get into. You're going to hear a lot of recommendations. Oh, he left. Okay. A lot of recommendations. Um, it depends on what your goals are. How do you feel? Recognize how you feel. So let's, uh, let's wrap it up there uh, so we can get going. Uh, we will... We will respond to your emails. Give us a, maybe a day. There might usually be a lot after webinars. But um, I want to say thank you, everybody, for listening to our webinar. Thanks, everybody.